Okay, what is happening? Good morning. Cheers, coffee. Oh, I got the big one. Monday size, baby. Okay. So, in the last video, we were talking about quadratic equations in standard or vertex form. I'm just going to close my door here. And their siblings, cousins, family, is the general form. So, in standard form, we had y is equal to a uh, x minus p squared plus q. Okay, a was our um, uh, I guess our expansion or compression term. Are we expanding or compressing? As well as are we opening down or are we opening up as a parabola? Uh, the P was our horizontal shift as well as the coordinate, the X coordinate of our vertex. Uh, and that coordinate is also the axis of symmetry. And then Q was our uh, Y coordinate of our vertex and our uh, vertical shift up or down. So standard form, very useful because each of these letters, um, has a significance, it tells us something directly. Uh, general form, so this was standard form, or vertex, standard slash vertex form, and its relative is general form. And we've actually, we're probably, you've probably seen the general form in previous years. So it's ax squared plus bx plus c. We essentially expand out this square here, collect terms, and this is what it ends up being, where A, B, and C are um, constants, or they're, they're actual numbers. So, these two are related, and they both have their uses, um, but for right now, the vertex is our more powerful form, uh, but we can work with both. So. Why general form? Or what do we gather from the general form? Well, one thing we can do with, with general form is we can factor it. We can, we can use our polynomial factory. Where you, uh, if we zero, if we put y is equal to zero, and we end up factoring this into, you know, x minus z, x minus r, where r and z are just numbers, or x plus one, in whatever form it is. But when we factor it, we find that our x-intercepts then become x is equal to z and x is equal to positive r. Because if we try and solve for x in this equation, well, if we divide out this x minus r here, you know what, I'm going to use regular numbers just to make it more clear. So I had x plus 2, x minus 3. These are my factors that I found from a general form. So if I were to do this, and I divided out the x minus 3 here. Well, if I divide out x minus 3 here, this is still 0. It's still 0. So I would get x plus 2 is equal to 0, or x is equal to negative 2. So x is equal to negative 2. And then if I did the same thing, but instead of getting rid of the x minus 3, I got rid of the x plus 2. x plus 2 here. I would have. 0 is equal to x minus 3 now, and x is equal to positive 3. So these factors tell us pretty directly that, okay, my x coordinate or my x intercepts, x intercepts which occur at y is equal to 0, are x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to 3. Basically just the opposite side of those numbers. One advantage of, of the general form when we factor it. But we can use the general form because we actually have a formula that allows us to convert between, um, between well, to, to gather these letters from this form. And those equations are uh, P is equal to negative 2 B over A. So if I have these values, I can figure out what my P is. So this is a very important equation. And if 
If I have P, then I can say Q is equal to C minus AP squared. And then A is equal to A. A does not change. So A is equal to A. Okay? You see here, we can go from here to here, and then we know everything. Once we're in this form, we know our, we know our vertex, we know our axis of symmetry, we know our, uh, our intercepts, or we can calculate our intercepts quite easily. Uh, so let's see what this looks like in, the, in practice. Uh, let's use, hmm, here I got one right here. So let's use this one right here, okay? So I'll let you take a look at this, write it down. This is a B up here, okay? So say I have an equation of the form y is equal to x squared minus x minus 6. Okay? So first thing I can do right here is I can, I can say, okay, well, I can factor this. Um, to figure out, so if I make y is equal to 0, this is what x squared minus x minus 6. Factoring is something we did in grade 10. I'm not going to get into it too deeply right now because it's not the purpose of this, but um, I could say, okay, what two numbers multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 1? Well, as someone who's done this a lot, I can tell you it's uh, minus 3 and positive 2. Okay, so I can put in here x minus 3 x plus 2 equals 0. So my x-intercepts are 3 and negative 2. This is where my curve is going to cut through the x-axis. Okay, so I'm going to x-intercepts for this guy, x-intercepts is equal to 3 and negative 2. But I'm, I'm more concerned with turning it into vertex form here. So I'm going to say, okay, well, P is equal to negative, it's been a while since I've worked with this stuff. It's negative 2, negative B over 2A, which here, my B is negative 1, my A is 1. So this is going to be negative, negative 1 divided by 2 times 1, or 1 half. So my P is one half or 0 0.5. My Q then is uh, or C minus AP squared. So my Q is equal to C, which is negative 6, minus 1, which is A, minus 1, times 0.5 squared. Or Q is equal to negative 6, minus 1 and 0.5 squared, 0.25, let me just make sure, 0.5 squared, 0.25. So we have Q is equal to negative 6 minus 0 0.25. So we get Q is equal to negative 6.25. Okay. So I have Q, I have P, and I know that A is equal to big A, so A is equal to 1. So I take all these points and I put them back into my equation for the standard vertex form. So this will become, where should I write it? I'll write it uh, right here. So my vertex form, back in red, will now be y is equal to x minus p. So this has to be, a, if it's positive 0.5, it should be negative 0.5 here, which is perfect. Squared minus 6.25. Q, P. Remember, the, the sign is opposite here. So if we have a positive p, then it's going to be minus p in here. 
If it's a negative P in here, we're going to be positive P in here. So here is my, and that tells me that my axis of symmetry occurs at x is equal to 0.5. Or x is equal to p, that's my axis of symmetry. My vertex is at 0 0.5, negative 6.25, and I know my x intercepts, so I have them up here. My y intercepts, or my y intercept, occurs when x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 would make this go away, this go away. So my y intercept is y is equal to negative 6. And that's pretty much everything I need to calculate for this guy. And that's, and that's why we like vertex form, is it's just easier to, uh, to work off of. Now the next step in this is to actually use the uh, completing squares method to go from general form to vertex form. Is, uh, sometimes it won't be as straightforward as this uh, and that's what we are going to be moving into next but yeah so so far it's, it's that that's it so if we want we can do one more example here just to show us how it works and I could yeah like I said before I could go from standard form to general form just by expanding and, and uh, collecting terms here uh, but say I had general form of negative 2x squared plus 6x minus 9. Okay, I just pulled this one out. This probably doesn't factor nicely, which sucks. Um, I'm not even going to try to factor it, because I don't think it's going to work. But let's just go into standard vertex form right over here. So, uh, I know that p is equal to negative b over 2a which is equal to negative 6 over 2 times negative 2 is 6 over 4, or 3 halves, or 1.5. And Q then is C minus AP squared, if I'm not mistaken. So that's equal to 9, this is not a Q, this is a 9, 9, the number 9, not a Q, uh, so it's not negative 9, minus negative 2 times 1.5 squared, which gives me negative 9 minus negative 2 times 1.5 squared, negative 4.5. And so and then my a is equal to a, so a is equal to negative 2. So if I plug this back into my equation in standard form here, put it right here, I get y is equal to negative 2 x minus p, and p is positive, so it's x minus 1.5 squared uh, minus 4.5. Okay? And we can gather all of our, our points on this chart from this. So. Uh, so what does this look like? Well, let me see here if I can pull this up on the graphing website here. So, we've got our our graph here. So I'm going to put in the original equation, which was negative 2. Where am I doing this? I'll put it right here. So I've got negative 2 to the power x. Oops. 
negative 2 x to the power 2 plus 6x minus 4.5. Okay? And there it is. There's the chart. It's uh, one point five is where its x intercept is, and that's where its axis of symmetry is, which makes sense. Plus six minus nine. It's supposed to be minus nine. That's why that's, I was a little confused there. Minus nine. So there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to put in our vertex form now of the same equation and see if it turns out to be the same. So we got negative 2 x minus 1.5 squared and then so we're already so right now as of right now you can see that that's the uh, we're up here that's our so let's see if the adding that now that transformation of ne negative 4.5 there we go. As you can see, we only have one, one chart showing up here. And if I were to delete the first one here, you'll see that we'll still have the other one sitting there. There we go. She's still sitting there. So that proves to you that those two are the exact same equation. Okay? So that's me. Thank you. We'll see you next time.